If you thought you'd seen it all, buckle up. Today, we're reacting to some of the, let's say, most unique medical TikTok treatments. Let's get started. <laughs> okay, first up, the Pigostat. <laughs> oh, look at this little guy. What a cutie. This is actually a mobilization device when kids need x-rays. When you get an x-ray, you have to sit still because if they move, then the picture becomes blurry. So this device actually allows them to sit still and hold them in position. And believe it or not, most kids tolerate this really well, and they really aren't as scared as you think they are. Next up, this one's pretty wild. Check this out. So this device is used for kids who have curvature of the spine or a compression, it helps to elongate the spine to correct whatever is wrong. Now these guys can swing obviously like Spider-Man and they also can walk with this device. They wear it as long as they need to. They get repeated x-rays to see when they are straightened out and they can then be removed. Patients seem to have a lot of fun on this device, but it's actually a really serious medical treatment. Unfortunately, this does have to be screwed into the actual skull bone because that's the only way to secure it. Next up is a pretty shocking treatment. This is not like a lobotomy, right? No, no, it's just electroshock. Oh good, I love electroshock it's not therapy. Mess up your hair either. It's that's okay. Look fabulous when I take this off. This is what they did in the 50s. <laughs> All right, so if I put this on. This is how they trick us to lower the rent. More like the 40s, dude. But believe it or not, this is actually a treatment that is used today. Electroconvulsive therapy or ECT therapy is something that's been used to treat severe depression. Nowadays, we see some liquid therapies like ketamine clinics that also help to treat depression. But back in the 40s, they used electroconvulsive therapy all the time. And it actually was used with great success. Although it's gotten a bad rap from its depiction in movies like The Shining, anyone see that one? It's something that's actually done with great control and can have great value for the patients who need it. Next up, I have a feeling this this one's gonna be a real zinger. Part three, bee venom therapy, removing the stinger. It is very painful well, with the, the stinging, thing. but you the body starts the working. Now I wanna do it. Let's talk about bee venom therapy. This is actually a real thing. When the bee stings, it releases the venom, and apparently this has some potent anti-inflammatory response for the body. So many people with rheumatism do this and have said they have had great success with resolution of their pain. I've also read some stuff about central nervous system diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, but I don't know any really good data that actually talks about the validity of bee venom therapy for those diseases. So I wouldn't go run off getting a bunch of bees and starting to sting yourself. As far as cruelty goes, from what I read a long time ago, apparently these bees are chosen when they're near the end of life anyway, so that when they sting, they're about to die, and it's not like you took them while they were young. So I'm not sure of the overall validity of this treatment, but some people swear by it. But I'll tell you, if you're allergic to bees, don't do bee sting therapy. Now this next one smells a little suspicious to me. It's day four of the fecal matter transplant where I'm inserting somebody else's poo inside my husband's bum. And today I've learned that you need to bring a plastic bag with you to put these when they're empty. Very important. Now there's actually some validity to this treatment. The most common place that I came across this in medicine were for patients who had contracted a really horrific bacteria called C. diff and it causes a toxin to be released and they get a horrific, just annihilation of their gut flora. They have like 10 bowel movements a day and it's called C. diff colitis. Now what they do is they go find a donor. Generally donors are people who haven't had antibiotics within the last six months. They don't have any immunocompromising diseases. They also have no risk for infectious diseases, and they also can't live with any chronic GI tract disorders like Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Donors are screened meticulously for things like hepatitis, syphilis, HIV, intestinal worms, ew, and then obviously they're screened for C. diff. Now fecal transplant is generally done by a gastroenterologist, not your partner, and they use a colonoscope to go up the bum and they place the fecal matter all throughout the large intestines. And for many, many patients, this is a miraculous cure for their disease. It works. Now this next treatment is really a slugger. Oh no. <laughs> what? Now we all know from the bazillion of dermatological influencers online, everyone talks about hydration of the skin. So these snails produce something called mucin and mucin is an extremely hydrating material. This has gone so far that they actually have a product 
that you can buy that is a mixture of snail mucin and niacinamide. By placing it on your face, you cause water to be drawn into the skin. It's an immense hydrator for the tissue, and it actually can give you that dewy glow that you might be looking for. I don't know about you dudes, but I prefer my snails in the garden. Now this next one, we're really gonna hammer this one home and talk about it. Y quedas como nuevo. <laughs> Oh! oh. Ouch. Is that Thor trying out a new career? You guys, over the past several years, since social media short form videos have gotten really popular, I've seen so many of these absurdly crazy videos. Now, whether you believe in chiropractics or not, I gotta tell you something. Let's leave the hammering to the professional carpenters and not to the spine. This is not something that I would go for. So do me a favor, friends. Please don't try this at home. It is not gonna end well. Best for last. Now, this one's really gonna light you up. Doctor, don't worry, x-rays are completely safe. <laughs> This is 100% accurate. We tell all patients it's safe. Meanwhile, we drape them in lead and then we sprint to the next room before we hit the button to take the x-ray. In all honesty though, radiology technicians wear a little button to monitor the radiation exposure. Back when I was a general surgery resident, we did a lot of orthopedic surgery. We had to have fluoroscopy in the operating room so we could get live pictures of the bones that we were fixing. And we also had to wear these little monitors so that we could monitor how much we had exposure to radiation. Thankfully so far, I do not glow in the dark. Well, that was a whirlwind through some of medical's most unique treatments and practices. Remember, always consult with a real life medical professional before doing any of these types of treatments. But for now, Dr. Ricky, signing off.